Okay, now we're going to look at uh, iteration statements within Java. And iteration statements are basically loops. Uh, these are uh, commands that we can use that will allow us to execute a number of lines of code, either one or multiple lines of code, while a certain condition is true, or if a condition is no longer, or until a condition is no longer true. So this is what the diagram looks like. Uh, we'll start with a variable a is equal to zero. Uh, we will test to see is a less than five, which in this case it is. And since that's true, we will then print yes. I will then have an iteration statement or an incrementer that will basically add one to a in this case. Once I have that, I will then loop back to the condition to see if is a still less than five. And if it is, I will print yes and I will increment it again. So it should be fairly obvious at this point that this will increment it five more times and once it is done it will come back to the condition is a less than five and once a is six it will no longer be true and then it will come down here and print done that we have exited out of our loop. So Java has three iteration statements. Uh, I've labeled them out here in a table so that you can see the gray box is basically what the code actually looks like uh, with the description below. Uh, the first one is the while statement. Now the way the while works is we have the while keyword, we have in parenthesis the condition, and the condition works the exact same way as it does in the if statement, such that it is uh, a boolean, it will, uh, it will render to a boolean value. Uh, with, we have the open brace, some code statements, and then a close brace. And the description basically says upon entering the loop, the code will test the condition. If it's true, if this condition is true, we'll execute the statements within the loop until such time as the condition is false. Again, it will execute all the statements, come down to the brace, the bottom brace, and then go back up to the condition and test it again. Normally, you will have an incrementer or something that will change the variable that is being tested. If you don't do that, uh, you could end up in an infinite loop. Uh, that will just be a loop that will continue on forever and you'll have to break the code somehow uh, usually with a control C or control X depending on how your uh, system is set up. The second one is a for statement so we have the for statement whereby um, the we have an initialize statement and this is the f a first statement that will be executed in the for loop. We'll have our condition that we will test and an iteration statement. It kind of combines the three primary things of a loop so the way it's re it reads is upon entering the loop, any variable may be initialized. So we might see int i equals zero. I can actually do a declaration at the same time. My condition might say i less than 100. Uh, and then it will execute the statements, come down to the bottom, and then it will perform the iteration statement so that I can increment i. i is equal to i plus one. So that it will then test the condition again and proceed. So the initialize statement is executed the first time it comes into the loop the iteration is executed at the end of each loop cycle and the condition is tested at the beginning of each loop cycle. The do while is a little bit different because it guarantees that the loop will be executed at least once. So here we have do, open, open brace, close brace. We have some statements between them. So there is nothing testing this condition at this point. It will just go through all of the statements and then test at the end of the loop while condition, while this condition is true. You'll notice there is a semicolon here, which is not the same as the other two. This is one difference that usually uh, fools many students. They forget this semicolon all the time. But the condition is basically the same. It evaluates to a boolean. The do while will guarantee that this loop executes at least once. The other two do not because they test the condition up front, but you can basically manipulate this in such a way that it will always execute at least once. So this is what it kind of the while statement looks like. We have a equals zero as an example. Uh, while a is less than six, here's my condition. This will evaluate to true. Uh, it will actually do this statement and then this statement. And you'll notice that this is my incrementer. It will increment a by one so that when it comes back to the loop, it'll test to see is a less than six. And this will guarantee that it ends out of the loop. Here's another example. This is an infinite loop while true. Now true is a Boolean value, so it meets the condition of a condition. It meets the existing condition that it evaluates to a Boolean value, and it will execute all the statements in here. Uh, this, since this condition is always true, this will go on forever. If you wish, you can actually put a break statement in here so that the loop may be designed to be infinite, but when it hits a certain condition, it can actually break. You can put the keyword break with an if clause, and it will execute out of the loop. It will, uh, the next line of code will jump outside of the loop, and that can occur at any point within those statements. 
So in the for statement, the for statement is a common loop because it's used for a lot of sequential iterations, say 1 to 100 or 1 to 1,000 or something along those lines. As we said before, the initialization is a statement that initializes the variable. And then you can see here, int i is equal to 0. The second piece to this is a condition, i is less than 1,000, and that is generally like the others. And the iteration is a statement that will execute at the end of the loop to iterate, in this case i++. Now i++ is a special operator that basically adds 1 to the existing value of i. And it will execute all of the statements within that loop, between the braces. And so this is a very, very clean way of writing these sequential type of loops, and it's usually the preferred way, uh, best practice way of writing these loops. So some of the special operators uh, building off of that are uh, if we wish to do things like plus equals, we can add a value to the current value of the variable. A plus equals 6 adds 6 to A. Minus equals would subtract 6 from A if we did A minus equals 6. If we wanted to do multiplication, we could do A times equals 6. And we can also do A divide equals 6. And these basically do the exact same thing as if we had done A is equal to A plus 1 a is equal to a minus 1, a is equal to a times 1, uh, or times 6 in this case, and a is equal to a divided by 6. There are four other operators, actually two other operators, just one goes after or before the variable, and these are basically post-increment and pre-increment, or post-decrement and pre-decrement. The plus plus after a variable will basically increment the value by 1, or the variable by 1, after it has been used. So by saying i++, it will use i first, and then it will increment it. If we did plus plus i, we are saying increment it before you use it. And the same holds true with the decrement. Decrement i after you have used it, and then uh, decrement i before you use it. The final statement is the do while statement. The do while statement guarantees that the loop will execute at least once. The way this works is that we have our do uh, keyword, we have an open brace and a closed brace, and all the statements that we want in the side of the loop are inside of the braces. What will then happen is we have our while, and we test the condition, a less than 6. In this case, again, this is just like any normal condition, it evaluates to a Boolean expression, true or false. If it is true, it will basically go back to the beginning of the do and continue the statements and then test the condition again. Notice the big difference here is the semicolon at the end of the while statement. Uh, it's one of the things that does confuse a lot of students, uh, that it is the only one with a semicolon there. So this statement, again, guarantees that the loop executes once. Generally speaking, you can do any of the loops with any of the statements. Uh, if you want to guarantee that the other loops execute once, you just ensure that your condition is true for the first iteration. In this case, you do not have to do that task you're testing uh, at the end of the loop.